Hello, shalom, rastafari. Greetings, my brothers and sisters. This is the 37th um, sabbatical reading and feeding known as Shalach, Shalach Lika in the Hebrew and Bamarinia in the Royal and Hard Bible, the Metzaf Kedus of Nikus Neges. It's called, we call it Lach Tilkalachu. Now, this is a continuation of this particular teaching here. We decided to touch on and focus on the number 37. Since we're in the book of Numbers, to look at the number 37 and to um, assess whether there is a, a, um, a mystical or a... see whether there is something in the numbers. And we see clearly there is something in the numbers. Then we said, okay, we want to just continue with this particular sabbatical portion, go through the fullness of it. But this particular sabbatical portion, I would say, in a sense, for us in this present time, this 37th sabbatical portion from chapter, um, Numbers chapter 13 to Numbers chapter 15 verse, I think, uh, 47. This particular portion, it speaks to what we are speaking of and what we have been calling for and what Rastafari chants for and that's repatriation to come out of Babylon to, to come into our, our own land. This, 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 this ancient prophecy being fulfilled in this present time. But when we look at the historical Record. When we look at the historical account, for example, um, let's answer a couple of questions. In fact, we wanted to do this from before. We wanted to actually touch on something like this before. Well, we go into like a, a lecture, a lesson, a teaching. Those who who um, have the patience and spirit of mind to actually listen and take notes and try to comprehend and, and follow up on the, the postings and the vids, you all know what we're saying. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're all overstand for yourself, and you're learning the truth for yourself. However, there are some who might be missing out, and so that there's none who are missing out, we're going to do a little series, a little, a little something new here. And we're going to ask the question, well, lack of repatriation. Why is there a lack of repatriation? And there's a lot of reasons that a lot of folks will give. They'll say, well, it's because of, you know, some worldly, seclorum, secular reason. But the real reason why there's a lack of repatriation and why we find ourselves 40 years later in this present situation or situation, it's very simple, my brothers and sisters. It's lack of faith. Lack of faith, lack of Jah's faith has led us to this point of inertia. So, in other words, lack of faith equals lack of repatriation. Well, so we say this particular sabbatical portion, this portion of our Torah reading for the Shabbat, for this Sabbath, which is known as Shalach Lika Bamarinya Lach Tilkalachu. In other words, speaking of the 12 scouts or the 12 spies who were sent out and they brought back reports. I'm sure you should be familiar with that if you're following up on your teachings and you're taking that self-responsibility. You should have already read through this particular sabbatical week's portion, reading and feeding. And brothers and sisters, if, you, if you're able to read, it, it's very simple to do. If you have trouble reading, then um, practice makes perfect. And there's a lot of programs and other things that are free in this present society and time that you can go and you can study and get up your basic skills because you have to know the truth for yourself. All right? You can't just so-called look at the pictures. You're going to have to start to read and study the words. You understand? So you can make sense out of the pictures and so that the words would form the vision because the people lack the vision. You understand? Lack the vision. Instead of keeping their eyes on Jah word, you understand, and the hearts and the minds in Jah spirit and being guided by Yeshua, 
Hamushia, being born again and new sons and daughters instead. We have a lot of folks, you, you know, with a lot of jokes and other things, and this is very serious. This is very serious to I and I and to I and I posterity. You understand? This is very, very serious. This is crucial. You understand? This is basically the reason why we had produced a video a couple of years ago and put it out. And this is the name of the video right here that Shashimani is still the issue. Shashimani is still the issue. This is our beloved Dr. Gladstone Robinson. He's transitioned now. He has passed on. Brother Fikra Selassie. And we give thanks and praise to His Majesty and His Christ for this brother and for all the brothers. He was one. This is one of the 12 pioneer settlers of Shashimani. Uh, you probably know of him. You can go to the YouTube, look up uh, Gladstone Robinson or Dr. Gladstone Robinson. Check out some of the vids. Check out some of the articles. Check out some of the books. In fact, there's a book that we have right here. Let's uh, show you this right here. This book from Babylon. From Babylon to Rastafari. I don't know if you've checked it out for yourself. I don't know if you've seen this particular book. From Babylon to Rastafari. Right? And this particular book by um, by uh, Mac. What's the brother's name? Douglas Mac. I could just, you know, the, 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 the name just rings in I and I consciousness because um, Dr. Robinson, you know, he's one of those who actually was part of that movement. Now, some of you may have heard about the mission to Africa. You know what I'm saying? Where, where um, the Jamaican government and, and certain Rastafari spearheaded a fact-finding mission to Africa. You know what I'm saying? To, to basically assess um, the, the, the conditions for the lost sheep. In other words, the very same thing that we're talking about and we're learning of and we're reviewing, going over in this Torah portion, reading and feeding. So this particular book right here is, is very, very interesting and it does give a more honest appraisal of the Afro-American, of the Afro-American or the African-American. Because most people, when they think of Ethiopia, they think of Rastafari, they even think of repatriation, they probably would think of Jamaica, or they would think of the Rastafarians of Jamaica. And yes, little Benjamin, little Benjamin is there. But what about Judah? What about the Afro-American, the African-American so-called Negroes? What about Judah? So we want to touch on this particular subject matter. But the first thing we want to get across to you all is that the lack of repatriation, you know what I'm saying, and, and this present... Um, state and circumstance that we find ourselves in the diaspora, scattered, dismembered in a sense. We're like the living Osiris or Osar or Osiris in a sense. We've been cut up in so many different pieces and spread through so many different nations. And perhaps the 72 nations, the very same nations that, that um, bow to the King of Kings in 1930. Now, this particular book right here, um, so let, let's begin off right here for a moment. All right, we're going to go to the next part of this lecture, but we wanted to, we're going to clear this right here, but we wanted to make this like a segment, and we'll probably call this lack of faith equals lack of repatriation. Because of a lack of faith, there's a lack of movement, because one lacks the, 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 the clear conscience you understand? The conscience and the consciousness is not up to the speed of Jah's covenant. Therefore, they cannot move into, you understand, that particular land until, you understand, they have that faith. You understand? And so they have that faith. See, when you get the faith, you get the courage. You understand? And then the just cause. Remember, the, the, the battle is not ours. You understand? The battle is not ours. You understand? Our enemies are our enemies, but the battle is not ours. The battle is Jah's. What we have to do is, is, is be in obedience to his will. You understand? And to learn and to know of his will and to act on it. There's an individual responsibility we need to 
accept and recognize, and this is what we touch on the teaching and, and knowing the truth for yourself, because a lot of the questions, a lot of the confusions are because there's a lack of education, there's a lack of study, there's a lack of community that's based on and a coming together that's based on studies. I mean, so many ones say, oh, we're going to have a party or reggae dance or we're going to have this sort of function, that sort of function. What about the Shabbat? What about even the first day or the Sunday? What about finding time to come together? What about groundation? Whatever happened to Rastafari groundation? You understand? Ones act like they know it, but they don't know it. It's obvious that we don't know it because if we knew it, we'll be doing in this present time. We will see the signs in this present time. We'll be acting on it because we'll be saying, Jah, this is right here in his word. Don't you see it? You understand? So Jah, had, Jah did it for them so Jah can do it for I and I. You see, instead of looking at the, the worldly material circumstances. And this is one of the reasons why the whole um, dysfunction within the organization of the Ethiopian World Federation has come about and why the so-called organization is functioning disorganized. Some people don't like that. A lot of people don't give I and I so-called heat or want to give I and I grief. We say take it to Jah in prayer. You know what I'm saying? Take it to Jah in prayer. Study his word. And then you'll find out that what we're saying is right and exact. You know what I'm saying? And we too a part of this. We're not above Jah law, but we are in Jah law. But unfortunately, too many who call upon the name of Jah, Selassie, I, Rastafari are out of Jah law. You understand? They may look, look alike. You understand? An Ethiopian, they may look alike a Rastafari, they may look alike an Israelite. You understand? But what's going on on the inside? What's going on in their hearts and their minds? How come we cannot come together? You understand? What happened to the unity? You see, the unity, what unites us is the faith. And the lack of faith divides us. So we're divided and conquered because of our ignorance and our lack of faith. The very same Adamic sin, sins, the, the very same things that Adam was going through, very same things. You know, and then we, if we look at the family structures and, and the institutions and, and, and how the men treat the woman and the woman treat the men and all these, it almost sounds like we're Gentiles. Yet when we look into Jah's word, Jah has already provided provision for us in his word. You know what I'm saying? But we have to make our wills obedient to his good influences. So lack of faith equals lack of repatriation. And, and before we go on, you know what I'm saying? Before we go on and get into this, this Torah portion in its fullness, what we want to do right here, right, what we want to do right here is let us go to the book of Hebrews. Let us go to the book of Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, let's go to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter, remember we said that, that Hebrews is our liturgy, it's our kedase, and truly, brothers, and truly, truly, it is. Truly, truly, it is. Now, here's, a, here's an exhortation. I'm going to begin from Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chap, chapter 3. Now, we are using the Schofield Reference Bibles, but you can use whatever Bible you have. But if you want to study along with us in discipleship, Schofield Reference Bible, you can download it for free at our website, www.loj society.org, but here we're in chapter 3 of the epistle to the Hebrews. This is, this is from verse 7. There's an exhortation. There's an exhortation. Exhorting means to build up. When you exhort someone, you build them up. Manet, bamarinya, manet. You exhort them, you build them up. You know what I'm saying? So we have to build up I and I selves, and we build up our, ourselves on God's word. Because His Majesty has said, for my part, I glory in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? His Majesty has said that Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christ, our black Lord Jesus Christ, is that example for us. And He has prayed for I and I that we might make note of the word that Yeshua has spoken. Without Him, we can do nothing. 
So if we see this inertia, if we see we're not doing the things that we need to be doing, check the Christ consciousness. Check the Christ level in your head and heart and among your so-called brothers and sisters. And then you, then you can see those who are doing the work according to the word, you understand, their Christ consciousness is acceptable to Jah. You understand, because he blesses that. You understand, for those of us who call on his name, you understand, and don't check his word, Jah has already said, in vain do they worship me. You understand, in vain, Selassie is God and King of Kings. Okay, and... Well, you just got to know that. No, no. If you know that, you understand, then you'll be in his word, then you'll know his word. You know what I'm saying? You'll be about preaching. You understand his word, proclaiming his word. You understand? You'll be about uniting your head and heart with Yeshua. You understand? And with the Father in the name of Yeshua. And then the brothers and sisters can come together, you understand, and do that which they are to do. Come out of this Babylon before it's too late. Don't go down with Babylon like the careless so-called Ethiopians or the careless lost sheeple. You understand the careless Israelites going down with Babylon. But right here, let's get into this. Um, the exhortation, this is speaking about the generation, right? The generation that came out of Egypt. Now, there's something very interesting to note right here. There was a whole generation that came out of Egypt. You, you recall? There's a generation that came out of Egypt. We're studying in the Torah portion, the 37th Torah portion, we're studying about this generation that came out of Egypt, right? They did not enter into the Canaan. It's like right now when we talk about Shashimani, we say, well, Shashimani was given, what, in some say 1955, officially, I officially. And we've seen the documents. We have copies of those documents with the King of Kings' words and signatures on those things. So we know that. And so that's a fact. Now, we look at 67 when Dr. Gladstone Robinson was appointed the Shashimani Land Grant Administrator. And that's a key, that's a key date, 1967. That's where we chart this 40-year period of time from. So when we go from 67, we add 40 years, what do we have? We have 2007. Ah, so why is, why is 2007 important? Well, from an Ethiopian perspective, that means a true Beta Israel, a true Israelite perspective. Amos 9 and 7, aren't you like the children, the Ethiopians, and the Tamil children of Israel? Then we begin to recognize, wait, well, hey, that's the Ethiopian millennium. You understand? That's the new millennium. That's the year 7,500. Now, why is that important? You understand? Why is that important? Because to Adam, it was said that there'll be 5,500 years until the Moshiach. You understand? Know until the Messiah, until Christ, until God's word would manifest to reverse the curse of Adam, to recur reverse that Adamic curse, right? That's why it says in the word that, that the first Adam and the second Adam is Yeshua. The second Adam is our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So when Christ was born, that signified the 5,500 years, right? But then the word said there would be 2,000 years, a dispensation of 2,000 years. So if we add this 2,000 years to the 5,500 years, we have 7,500 years, and that was 2,007. There's more within the book of Hanok and Enoch and Kufale and Lukul Genesis, known as the book of Jubilees, that verifies that, and even in this particular word, the Bible. You understand? Because though we have like 66 books here, there are other books that the early Christians had and knew of. Some of them we have sought to republish again. For example, let me, sale, let us bring out this book right here. Where's this particular? Here we go, right here. Such as this book, which a couple of y'all have ordered. You understand? Um, the book of uh, the Gedla Adam. You understand? Of the conflict, the combat of Adam against Satan. You understand, which is one of the ancient scriptures that was known to the Hebrews, the ethnic Hebrews, the black Jews. And this is why it's been preserved in its Ethiopic. So this also gives you additional information that collaborates, corroborates, and also gives 
additional detail. So when we're reading things in the Bible, for example, Adam and Eve and, and the family and our ancestors, some things it might be a little bit hard to really get because you're searching in the Bible and you, you get it in the spirit, but this now verifies that, yes, there was ancient documentation. So when those folks wrote, you understand, like, like for example, if I write to you all today, I'm not going to explain how the U.S. government was set up unless that's the topic matter. I'm just talking about something. It, I'm, I'm speaking to you because you already know certain things. We're already aware of certain things in this time. Some things are already common knowledge. So when reading the Bible, some parts seem a little bit cryptic because there was already things that was common knowledge. You see, when the Bible was canonized by mainly the Gentiles and the Romanish and others, when it was canonized, some books they discluded, you know, saying, because of that black truth that was in it, you know, saying, because of certain elements of the truth, because they wanted to bring in their paganism into Christianity. And this is where we get the whole mystery Babylon or Romanish Catholicism, Protestant daughters, so forth and so on, and we come down to this present time of so-called counterfeit or Gentile Christianity. You know what I'm saying? But now Ethiopia, you know what I'm saying? Ethiopia is our divine heritage. And we're speaking about holy imperial Ethiopia, not secular, you know what I'm saying? Not, not secular political Ethiopia of today. You know what I'm saying? The present, the present, um, how can we call it, the present apostasy, the present falling away. There must be a rebirth. There must be a renaissance. The monarchy must be restored. I and I must come out of Babylon and enter into that promised land. Now, what does the Israelite story and the Bible teach us that is particularly important for us, especially as Rastafari in particular, you see, because we say we know him. You know we say he is our father. We know him. You understand? Know and we are to be the light, so-called, or the illumination to the lost sheep, to the black people, and even to the Gentiles. But we have to acknowledge that a generation has fallen short because of unbelief or a lack of the true faith, a lack of the knowledge of it, and therefore how can you act on something that you don't even know? You know what I'm saying? So, right here, this is the exhortation. The generation that came out of Egypt did not enter the Canaan rest. You know what I'm saying? That word rest, when you hear that word rest, think of Shabbat on a level. They didn't enter into the Canaan rest or the, the, Can, the Canaan Shabbat. You see, that's the land that was promised to their ancestors. Like, we have a promise of the King of Kings. We have a promise of God as well. Biblical, scriptural, historical, real. But now how can we, it's like if you have an inheritance, but you don't know who you are, you can't go and claim that inheritance. Now if somebody says, well, you know, you're really related to so-and-so, and, and, and they were talking to you, but see what happened is that your, your ancestor was taken into slavery and the name was taken from them. And so, since the names were taken from them, you was growing up thinking that you were Gentile, but this is really your true story, and this is your true inheritance. That, that wealth is yours. Now, how, if somebody heard about that, what's the first thing they have to do? Well, first of all, they would dismiss it. They'll say, oh, no, that, you, must be, you must be lying to that. If that was true, somebody would have told me. But most people who are somewhat sane and real would check it out for themselves. They would still do due diligence. You understand? Especially if they, even if they're looking at it from a worldly, materialistic perspective. You understand? And, and we're speaking this to those who still are affected by the world. So let's say somebody had some money for you, right? And, and, and you heard about a famous person that died, and somebody came to you and said, you know, you were related to that famous person that died. And then you hear the news say, oh, we're looking for their for their inheritance, but we cannot find them. So this money is probably going to be sent back to the government, right? But somebody told you, you know, you're related to that person, but here's what happened to you. And this is why you don't see it in your name because your name was taken from you generations ago. You understand? But here's some of the proof and everything. It's out there on the Internet. You can search it out, Google it, so forth and so on. You mean you wouldn't Google it? You wouldn't search it out for yourself? Then you deserve to lose your inheritance. You understand? I and I 
must ask, seek, and knock. You understand? Now, here it says that it was because of unbelief. It was because of lack of faith. You understand? It was because of a lack of faith. You see, because if they had the faith, they would act on that. If we say that he is God and King of Kings, if we say we are Ethiopians and we are Hebrews and Beta Israel, then that means we should know this word. You know what I'm saying? Even Gentiles will say we're not Israelites, but they believe that Christ and God has extended mercy to them as Gentiles can, can receive of this. And we say we're the people and we are not in this, then, 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 it, then it makes sense that what we're seeing going on is going on. You know what I'm saying? But some of us are saying, never again, never again, not for I and I, never again. How, 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 how can we? And then this is the reason why some of us as Rastafari who might have Rastafari children try to raise up. You know, the children, you know, they heard all this stuff about Rastafari, but they say, where are these promises of Jah? You know what I'm saying? Where is it? And how come you're not acting on it? Africa is I and I land, Ethiopia. I just thought to give we okay, what are we doing about it? You know what I'm saying? The first thing we need to do about it is to get informed. And then the next thing is to get involved. And this is the information. So we're gonna go into the reasons why the Israelites did not enter into that particular promised land. I want you to stay tuned to the next part of it. It's, it's very, very important that you understand what, what, what it is we mean when we say lack of repatriation or lack of faith equals lack of repatriation. When, once we build up our faith, then we can come out of Babylon and child willing and hopefully we do it before it's too late. So stay tuned for the next part of this. Shalom Rastafari.